Hey everybody, this is Paul with Modern Driveline. Today, we're gonna cover the installed version of our hydraulic master cylinder and slave cylinder kit on a 65 Mustang Fastback. You've seen the bench test, now we're gonna put it into a real world application on the vehicle. Most importantly, follow the instructions. The instructions have been revised to cover more things such as don't do certain things more than to do certain things. It will actually take more time to set up and get ready to bleed the system than the actual bleeding process will go. Now this car has had a transplant transmission put into it so this is a re-bleed of an existing system. So the actual new bleed of the system goes very similar to what you're going to see in the video. So Okay we're going to take you through the first part of the instructions to uh, disconnect the master cylinder rod from the reduction linkage. The part you're disconnecting is this gold clevis pointing with the screwdriver. You're not connecting it from, disconnecting it from here and you're not disconnecting it from the pedal. The disconnection happens at this gold pin and this gold clevis. So let's get started. We're going to take out the E-clip that's on the far side of our video here and then you push out the pin. Once the pin is removed, then you simply will go up and start your setup for your bleed process on the rest of the linkage components. So as you can see here, the pin is removed. This eliminates any load that might be on the master cylinder rod itself. All right, let's get started on the next steps. So here we are under the vehicle. We're performing step two of the setup instructions for uh, the bleeder kit. Again, you want to make sure all of your fluid fittings are tight for the line, the elbow going into the slave cylinder, and of course your bleed screw and mounting hardware. Before you do any bleeding operations, you also want to make sure the setup of your clutch fork is also correct. If you can see this in the video, there's a little bit of movement here. That just indicates that we're pretty much bottomed out in our slave cylinder, which is exactly where you want to be. We will also be opening our bleed screw and closing our bleed screw for this bleed operation. Let's go to the top and get set up and put some fluid in the system. Okay, so here we are on the top side of the vehicle. We're getting ready to start our bleed procedure. You wanna make sure to have some soapy water nearby just in case you have some spillage of the brake fluid onto your paint surfaces so you can clean that up. So we're gonna fill our syringe and filling the syringe is like having the system filled twice. There's enough volume in the syringe like filling the system twice. You wanna tap out your air and bring that to zero as best as possible, getting all of your air bubbles out, making sure there's none in there before you get started. Obviously, you'll remove your cap. Some reservoirs do not have bladders. This one does. Make sure not to drip any brake fluid anywhere. And optionally, you can install this beaker stopper into the top of the reservoir and put the syringe directly into this hole in the beaker stopper. The preferred method is to just put the syringe directly into the reservoir, as shown like this. You will have to locate the syringe to the center so that it will be in the port for the reservoir hose and then you'll plunge her down. We're gonna go down to the bottom side of the vehicle very quick and we're gonna open up our bleed screw so we can do this operation. Okay, so we're gonna plunge her down in a single swift stroke with the plunger centered directly into the reservoir port. Make sure you press firmly down to hold the syringe in place so fluid does not backwash into the reservoir. And closing our bleed screw for this bleed operation. Okay, once we've completed our bleed procedure, we've removed our syringe. Now we're gonna reinstall our bladder because this particular reservoir has one. And reinstall the cap. Obviously, we'll check the system to make sure that it functions, but we're planning for success. Okay, now that we've got our clutch pedal hooked back up, we're gonna test the system. Watch for the tire rotating. We're in fourth gear, and we're gonna press on our clutch pedal. And does our tire rotate? Yes, it does, look at that. So that means we have clutch release and we have a good pressurized system. We're done with the bleed operations. Let's clean up and put everything away. 